so with that, we wanted to briefly uh, take this opportunity, and again, <coughs> briefly, maybe five or ten minutes, just to start to show the for the residents what uh, the state will be uh, experiencing on June 12th, which is ranked choice voting for the first time in use in the state of Maine and actually in the nation regarding a statewide primary election. So as uh, the voters may or may not know, on June 12th, we are actually holding three elections simultaneously in the city of Lewiston. Every single voter will be receiving two ballots. One ballot will be the school uh, referendum question that you recently <coughs> approved. The other ballot available for every single voter, regardless of their party affiliation, is a state referendum ballot asking the continuation of ranked choice voting going forward from November forward. And then the third ballot option would be for registered voters if they are enrolled in a political party, being the Democratic Party, the Green Independent Party, or the Republican Party. If a Lewiston voter is enrolled in one of those parties, they will receive that applicable party ballot. The party ballots, the candidate ballots, are double-sided this year. One side contains the votes for uh, candidates for state senate, for state representative, and so forth. And those are all in the traditional style election. You vote for one person. The other side of the ballot this year will be the races for ranked choice voting. For both the, the Democratic ballot and the Republican ballot, those will both include their gubernatorial nominees. And then on the Democratic ballot will also be the representative to Congress position. So what we wanted to show the voters, the ballot looks a little different. Uh, Councillor Ray has been asking us for, to conduct voter outreach. And so we have been doing that. We were at the polls uh, all day last Tuesday, and we spoke with hundreds of voters, and we passed out sample ballots to hundreds of voters. We received lots of questions from the voters. They were the same types of questions, which I'll review for you in a minute. But many, there's a lot of misconceptions about ranked choice voting. People think we're going to have new machines, different machines, touchscreen machines. So we want to assure voters that they will still be voting on a paper ballot. It will look a little different, as you can see on the screen, for the rank cho choice voting option. Across the top, in the gray bar, it says first choice, second choice, third choice, fourth choice, fifth choice, sixth choice, seventh choice, and eighth choice. Basically, voters have the opportunity, if they wish, to rank their preference of candidates from most favorite to least favorite. This is optional. And this is what we like to stress to folks. Once we passed out the sample voters to a lot of the voters last week, they were very sort of relieved once they saw the ballot. They said, oh, this doesn't look that difficult. So I really think it's almost the fear of the unknown. They hear about ranked choice voting in the media, but once they actually saw a sample ballot, they said, oh, that's pretty logical and not that difficult to understand. So we just wanted to put on the TV screen for folks, uh, this is the sample Democratic Party ballot. <coughs> And then I will just show the sample Republican Party ballot. And this is the sample Republican Party ballot for the state of Maine. So this is what the voters in Lewiston will be seeing. And again, this has across the gray bar on the top, first choice, second choice, third choice, fourth choice, and fifth choice. So we wanted to let folks know that. Some of the common questions that we were receiving is, why isn't every race on the entire ballot conducted by ranked choice voting? The state language, the state law language, only has that comply with some of the races and some of the positions, not all of them. For example, it does not apply to county seats. And the most important key is that there have to be three or more candidates in that particular race to make this even applicable. So in Lewiston, on our Lewiston statewide ballots, that pertains, again, to the governor's seat for Republican and Democrat, and then on the Democratic ballot, also the representative to the Congress. So we've been conducting voter outreach at the polls last week. We also have just established a ranked choice voting information table here in City Hall. It's on the second floor of City Hall. We have copies of the handouts. We encourage folks to come in. Our goal is to try to reach the residents who may not have access to the internet, because our theory is, is that if you have access to the internet, you can probably go online 
and gain information for yourself through the State of Maine website, the Secretary of State's website, the City of Lewiston's website, but folks who don't have internet access is what we're really trying to, to target and reach out to. So we do have that informational table, the second floor of City Hall. We have hundreds of copies of material on there. Uh, there are basically two handouts. One is the sample ballot. It's double-sided, Democratic on one side, Republican on the other side. The other handout we have is uh, both from the State of Maine, one is basic information regarding ranked choice voting, and then the other side is the list of frequently asked questions. And this is really, we received maybe the top uh, six type questions at the polls all day long last week from hundreds of voters. They were asking the same types of questions. So we basically took those questions, put those into a one-page handout, and we have that available upstairs as well. So we strongly encourage voters who are interested in gaining more information to please swing by City Hall, second floor, and pick up that literature. And they're certainly welcome to ask us questions, should they have any questions about it. So I think with that, Mr. Mayor, we're going to do a very, very quick demonstration. Uh, the mayor is going to be our, our practice voter, but you can remain right there. <coughs> I believe David is able to, oh, I maybe need to take this down, excuse me. So I believe David is going to be able to get a screenshot of the um, easel here. So we are going to use the mayor as a sample voter and I will just vote via post-it notes. So uh, to keep the politics completely out of this, we have a sample ballot question, what is your favorite flavor of ice cream and what should be the, the official flavor of ice cream for the city of Lewiston? So our choices, Mr. Mayor, the candidates are chocolate, coffee, mint chocolate chip, strawberry, and vanilla. What is of those? I, I, I don't really, uh, if, as long as it's chocolate, it's okay with me. <laughs> Well, coffee is going to be number one of, of those bad choices. Okay, so. so the mayor's first choice for ice, for ice cream flavor would be coffee. So if the mayor was in the in the voting booth and he had this ballot and he wanted to vote for coffee as his number one choice, he would basically just mark his ballot for in the first position for coffee. Mr. Mayor, what is your second choice? Good the mint. The mint chocolate chip. So the mayor's first choice. He indicated under the first row for first choice, that's his favorite. His second choice is mint chocolate chip. So then he would fill in the oval on his ballot there. Mr. Mayor, what's your third choice? Uh, vanilla. Vanilla is third choice. In the third choice column, he would go down to vanilla and he would mark his ballot right there. What is your first, fourth choice, Mr. Uh, Mayor? Strawberry. Strawberry. Uh, sorry, Jim. <laughs> fourth choice. Purpose, you're doing no, I didn't actually. That's, that would be the. <laughs> And so your fifth choice is chocolate. So you are, have ranked your choices with the options presented. Your first choice was coffee, second mint chocolate chip, third vanilla, fourth strawberry, and fifth chocolate. So this is how voters would fill out their ballot if they wanted to rank every single option and choice. What voters, and most voters seem to, to understand that. So what the types of questions we were getting is, do I need to rank and vote for every candidate position on the ballot? And the answer is no. If the mayor said, boy, coffee is my first choice, mint chocolate chip is my second choice, and vanilla is my third, and I really don't care for chocolate or strawberry at all, you do not have to vote for them. And everything that you have indicated on this ballot will be tabulated and will count. This is not viewed as an incomplete ballot. This is allowable. So you are allowed to vote for, rank as many choices as you, the voter, would like. Completely optional for you. And this would still count. You can count just one if you want to. I'm sorry? You can just vote for one. Yes, correct. So thank you, Councilor. So then the next question, which and this was the question we really received all day last, last week at the polls, was what if I only voted for one? Is that okay? And the answer is yes, absolutely. If you just voted for one, it would need to be your first choice. You would need to fill it in in the first choice column. 
If you only voted for one in fifth choice, it would not count. So you need to make sure that if you are voting for one, you need to fill it in in your first choice column. And the mayor said that his first choice would be coffee. If this was the only type of ballot that the voter filled out, just one first choice, it would still count and still be tabulated and calculated at the end of the night. So this is absolutely allowable. This is the number one question we received from voters last week, so this is absolutely allowable. The other question we received is, let's say the mayor said, boy, I really like coffee ice cream a lot. <laughs> and I want, I want everybody to know that I love coffee ice cream and therefore I'm going to give extra emphasis to it and I'm going to vote for every single choice position for coffee. Under the state rules and regulations, the first choice would count and that is it. It is not possible to give one candidate extra votes. So this would count and the voting machine would ignore those votes because that is considered an overvote. And the language in the law says that this ballot would be exhausted after this first choice is tabulated by the machine. Then the machine looks at your second choice but says, wait a minute, you already voted for this candidate. You can't give extra votes to the same candidate. So from this point forward, this ballot would be deemed exhausted. It's already, the, the votes have already been tabulated and accounted for the favorite candidate, but only once because only one, everybody's only allowed to receive one vote. So this was the next common question and this is not permitted. The question is, will this ballot be counted or will it be kicked out? The answer is it will be counted for the first choice only, but not any succeeding questions. And then the last type of scenario was, what if I skipped some rankings? And people may do this intentionally or accidentally. So let's say that the mayor said, yep, chalk, uh, coffee is my number one choice. Um, I don't really have a second favorite, but let's say that mint chocolate chip and vanilla are, are um, you know, sort of my kind of out there, but I don't really have a second one. The question is, would this still count? The answer is yes. It would count for your first choice for coffee. Then if you have only one skipped ranking, and this might be done maybe accidentally by the voter and not intentional. If you have one skipped ranking, the machine will be programmed to go to your next choice ranking and then to your next choice. However, the law says that if you skip two choices, the next vote does not count. It is deemed as an exhausted ballot. So your first choice will always count, but if you skip two rankings in a row, two or more rankings in a row, the following one will not count. But if you only skip one ranking, it will count. So probably not as common. We didn't receive hardly any questions about this category two weeks ago when we were talking, or last week when we were talking to hundreds of voters. Again, the number one question was, if I voted for one choice only, will my ballot count or will it be kicked out? And it would absolutely count, yes. And could I give extra votes to one position in the, or to one candidate? And the answer is no. So I think with that, that was basically the quick introduction we wanted to do, Mr. Mayor, just to sort of show the voters what the ballots look like and the basic standard process here. We encourage people to go to the city website. The Secretary of State's office just released today an animated video. It's a five minute video. The people in the building who have watched it said it actually answered all their questions about ranked choice voting. They thought it was very well done. It was very simple and very direct. So that link is right on the city's website as well. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Quickly. Sorry, um, just one clarification because it already has come up, of course, um, is that uh, people should educate themselves before going to actually vote because what are your limitations on election day and when a ballot is presented? Yes, thank you, Councillor. This is going to be uh, very difficult for the election workers uh, and the municipal clerks, but uh, the Secretary of State has been very clear in their direction to municipal clerks and election workers. We are absolutely prohibited when voters are actually casting a ballot, so either at the polls or at the city clerk's office when they're voting by absentee ballot, we cannot explain to them the example of the process that I just explained to you. The only thing we are allowed to do is read to them the instructions that are already pre-printed on the ballot. That is going to be frustrating for us and that'll be frustrating for the voter. Mm -hmm. So that's why a lot of communities are trying to work really hard to get out the information in advance of election day. 
So again, um, we've been talking to voters. I'm also going uh, June 4th to the Lewiston Senior Citizens to their monthly uh, meeting to meet with them, to show them the examples, and I'll run through the demonstration that I just showed you. Uh, the Secretary of State, Matt Dunlap, is coming to Lewiston on Tuesday, May 29th. Yeah. Yes, 29th, um, at 4 p.m. at the Lewiston Public Library to present a two-hour session on ranked choice voting and to be there to answer questions from voters. And they're also doing a Facebook Live um, presentation on Thursday, May 24th, I believe at uh, 6 o'clock. So we have that information on our information table upstairs as well. There'll be a lot more publicity about it, I think, in the next week or two. So we're really trying to work to get the word out in advance of Election Day, because as you noted, on Election Day at the polls, the only thing we're allowed to do is read the instructions that are already pre-printed on the ballot to the voter. Thank you. Thank you.